So, Anthony, it's uh, good to see you again, and it's good to talk to you as we look ahead to the uh, the action in the League of Ireland Premier Division uh, this weekend, in particular involving Finn Harps. Uh, defeat last week to UCD. Harps will be looking to right that wrong because it turned out to be a, a hugely disappointing. Uh, that was a game that maybe you thought Harps might have picked up a third one of the season, and Anthony. Mm, it was very disappointing, Ashley, because going into that game, you are expecting them that. You know, all along we've been saying that Harps are lucky this year that UCD have are in the Premier Division and, you know, they're so much inexperienced and they've taken a lot, a lot of big defeats this season, UCD. Um, so that was a real kick in the teeth for them. Um, by all accounts as well, UCD played quite well in the first half and were worthy, worthy victors on the night and Harps put a bit of pressure on them in, in the second half, but very disappointing. And it closes the gap to two points, which... You know, when we're almost halfway through the season, it gives UCD a wee bit of hope. Um, so the next couple of weeks are, are going to be very important for Van Harps and hope and and the and the challenge ahead of them to try and stay in the Premier Division. Yeah, and what about the challenge next? Draw United, Keith Cowan and Cole there. Um, just of course sitting above them and and the table. Uh, what sort of test will Van Harps face when they go to United Park on Friday, Anthony? Well, the one thing about Drada and. Drada, they've got good experience in the squad and they're very well organised. Um, you know, their style of play sort of varies from three at the back to, you know, to a back four. And, uh, you know, Keith Cowan's been integral to, to their good performance this season. He's been unfortunate with the, the few injuries he's picked up. And that has coincided with Drada dropping points. Um, if we look back to the, the Drada performance against Dundalk, where they, where they won 1 0, very well organised, very disciplined. Keith Cowan at the heart of the defence, organising, uh, using all his experience. You know, Drada, they've, they've been very unfortunate, I think, in, in the injuries that they've picked up, you know, notably Keith, obviously, but, um, you know, talking off air, Colin Whelan, you know, picked up a, a serious cruciate ligament injury last weekend. So it's an opportunity for Finn Harps, who again, like Finn Harps, traditionally are well organised and, you know, try and stay in games. So it's one of them games where Harps have to go into the game with a wee bit of hope, try and close the, the gap in UCD but, or Andrada, but certainly don't let Drada um, widen the gap with a, with a victory. Yeah, Conley's returned a bit of a boost for Ollie, given the amount of Massive. injuries that he had. And McWoods is coming back as well. Yeah, Ryan Conley is key to Finn Harps' um, you, you know, this season, with the experience he brings and, and his quality, like he's, he's a real talented player and he didn't play for Shamrock Rovers for nothing. Um, it's important that that Ali can keep Conley and, and Barry McNamee fit especially as two of the most experienced, but also two of the most creative players that they have. Um, you know, Conley, he rarely, rarely has a, a poor game. Like he, he leads by example. He pops up with the occasional goal, and he's quite creative at a time as well, which Harps certainly lack from play. You know, Harps are good from set plays. They've scored goals from set plays this year. And really, if you take Conley and uh, Barry McNamee, certainly out of the middle of the park, you know, they do lack that creativity. Yeah. Uh, going to draw it now with just two ones, setting two points off the bottom and, and the table. Obviously, Ollie would have liked more points from home matches. That's not the case. Is this the game now that he has to have a real cut at it from the very start, given that the, they're away from home and there's a there's a huge intense battle at the bottom? Yeah, um, I think like Ollie, knowing Ollie and watching Van, Har- Van Harps over the years with with Ollie in charge, like they're never going to go out and and try and win a game in, in the first half. Like Ollie will be looking at that the ninety minutes to to score a goal to. You know, to pick up points, they've also 90 minutes and watch to work hard and be organized and keep a clean sheet. So, in terms of Ollie's his outlook towards the game, I don't see it changing much, but he certainly sees this as an opportunity where he can go and get something from the game. Um, and it's imperative that if Harps are gonna, if they're gonna stay in the league this year, given what happened last week against UCD, they're gonna have to go down with a positive mindset, mindset against Strada, and um, you know. They certainly don't want to get beat, um, but you know certainly that we want to pick up some points and and uh, try and extend the the gap between them and UCD. Yeah, because three points could be very key uh, this weekend, given that Drogheda on Monday night are taking on the defending champions Shamrock Rovers as well. So you could find yourself 
come next week, maybe sitting tied uh, with Drogheda United. So it could turn out to be a very, very important three points. You could be, Ashin, you could be, come Monday night, you could be, um, you could be, you could be level with, with, um, with Drogheda. Um, you know, and then going forward then, it, it gives you, it gives you confidence. You know, the last that you don't want Drogheda, from a Finn Harps point of view, you don't want Drogheda extend their, their cushion to six points because that's, you know, in League of Ireland terms, for a team, especially like Finn Harps, we're two victories all season. Like, you know, it's very difficult to pick up three points in the League of Ireland, especially. It's it's more difficult now, given the fact, you know, the, the top teams, there is, there's that big a gap between the top teams and the bottom. Um, so going, in, going, going to Drogheda, it's certainly a game where they'll be thinking that they can get something from but it's, it's vital that they don't lose the game either, Ashley. Yeah. We're, we're talking here, obviously, on the presumption that tonight, Thursday, uh, UCD don't beat Shamrock Rovers at, at the Belfield. That's a game that you would expect the defending champions uh, to win. And is there a chance that maybe UCD could overtake Harps ahead of the game on Friday? I don't I don't see it, Ashley. You know, it was a massive one for UCD last week against Van Harps. But... Um, to be honest, you know, usually they've shipped quite a few goals this year and we've seen them getting beat 7-1 by Derry earlier on this season. Um, so Shamrock Rovers, you know, the quality that they have going in to play UCD, relatively inexperienced, quality football in, in the way that UCD will approach the game. But, you know, you can't see anything other than a, than a Shamrock Rovers one there. Yeah. In relation to, to Harps again, I know I spoke to, to Declan Boyle uh, last week and we were talking about the two games against UCD and Drogheda United and he said four points would be a very, very outcome, a very, very good outcome out of those two games. What would be a very good outcome in your mind, Anthony, on Friday night, Drogheda and then hosting Dundalk at Fun Park on Monday night? Well, I think given the fact, you know, Drogheda are ahead of them in the league. Um, obviously, you know, state and obvious here, it'd be great to go to Drogheda and get three points. But I think, you know, given the situation, Drogheda, Dundalk will come back into a bit of form now as well, Ashley. You know, they'll be looking at this weekend's uh, fixtures, um, especially to play Derry on Friday night. You know, they can close the gap on Derry um, and push, um, you know, if they beat Derry, they'd go four points behind them. And then going into the, the game at the weekend, then Sligo home to Derry, uh, Harps playing Dundalk. You know, Dundalk will be looking at the next couple of games where they can close the gap to maybe one or two points on uh, on Derry City. But Harps, like, after last week's game, you'd be looking at saying, if they can avoid defeating the two games, it'll, it'll be a positive outcome for them. Um, because they need to start building a wee bit of... They need to put points, start putting points on the board, Ashton, but they also need to start start getting confidence from the games that they're playing. It's not nice as a footballer if you're losing games every week and especially losing a game that people from the outside looking in are expecting you to win. So um, I think at this, the state they're in at the minute, the position they're in, it's one very much one game at a time. If they go to draw, draw to tomorrow night, don't get beat, pick up a point. That's a very good point on the road. And then home game against Dundalk, anything can happen on on a on a given night. Yeah, so a couple of draws uh, would be would be good enough. But what about the goals? Harps have been shy of the goals this year, aren't they? So they haven't. When you're when you're alluding to mentioning confidence there and trying to get a wee bit of momentum, a bit of confidence, obviously scoring goals was a huge part of that. Yeah, well, if you look back to the the, the Shelburne game where where they they went to talk and they they won three nothing. You know they defended really well that night, kept a clean sheet. But the set plays, you know, they, 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 I remember Connor Tourish got his first goal of the season that night. Connor Tourish had a massive threat from set plays. Um, Ethan Boyle, big threat from set plays. You know, so the delivery, Harps have been very reliant on set plays the last couple of years. Um, going back to when Tony McNamee was playing with his long throws, which were uh, very effective. You know, so Harps have to go back to basics and what Finn Harps are good at. Finn Harps are, have been good at the last couple of years been very well organised, been very disciplined and been reliant on set plays. Obviously, you've got that wee bit of creativity with Barry McNamee, Tumlin if he plays, Ryan Connolly, but set plays are such a massive part in the game um, that that's where, that's where Finn Harps are, are probably, 
their their best chance of scoring goals because at the end of the day, you look at the the goal scorers they've had: Mikhailovich, McWoods, and Turish. Both have all three have two goals each, and then you know anybody else has scored just one goal. They've only scored twelve league goals this season, um, which is a worry, and they've conceded twenty five, which is very unlikely. Um, so there's a, there's certainly not an awful lot of work work for them to do. I think. They will score goals. They'll continue to get the odd goal from set plays, but it's very important that they start keeping clean sheets, Ashen. Yeah. Uh, just moving on to Derry City, how would you sum up their form uh, recently? Obviously, they were top of the table. They've lost that spot now to Shamrock Rovers. Shamrock Rovers tonight, if they beat UCD, will go seven points clear at the top. A couple of draws in there for Derry, uh, a defeat as well. Maybe the more experienced side of Shamrock Rovers coming through more in recent weeks than that of Derry, uh, Anthony? Yeah, I think Derry probably... You know, they got off to a brilliant start to the season and then, you know, it sort of come back to the game where they lost to UC or to Shelburne at home. You know, that sort of, um, you know, started a wee bit of a, maybe put a, cast a wee bit of doubt in the minds of the players. And um, and in the last seven games, they've only picked up two victories and both them victories were uh, one against UCD, one against Pats. Um, you know, so Derry need to sort of, push the reset button Ashing. Um they have they've had a really good season so far, but at the end of the day, they're competing against Shamrock Rovers. And if they want to continue to challenge Shamrock Rovers for the league title, they've got to turn the draws, which has been three draws the last couple of weeks, they've got to turn them draws into victories. Um because you can't see it's very difficult for teams to to take points of Shamrock Rovers. And if you're looking throughout the league Derry still be looking to say who can who can challenge Rovers who can take points off them if they're going to close the gap on them, and uh, they've got to look after themselves. They've got to start picking up victories again, start picking up three points, and hoping that other teams um, will take points off Rovers. But I'm sure Rory Higgins in his first full season, he'll be quite happy with the way things have gone. He will be disappointed that they've dropped so many points the last couple of weeks, but he'll be looking at as this is first full season in, in a job where he's probably looking at two, three years where, um, you know, we can develop a squad and build on it um, because they have the resources now um, to challenge Hammer Grover. So uh, quite a positive start for Derry, but obviously the last few weeks have been disappointing for them. Yeah. And uh, just moving away from the Premier Division of the League of Ireland, uh, we're going to look at intermediate level. Bunnage United have another big match this weekend. They're playing a Maiden City. Uh, in new buildings in Derry. Friday night, Anthony, it's the, uh, the inaugural Northwest of Ulster Intermediate Cup, which uh, the two leagues formed. It's been very, very competitive. There's been some excellent football on it, but Bunnagee very much still on the hunt for, for the treble on the cup front this season. Um, what will it be like on Friday night, do you think? Um, it'll, be, it'll be a good game of football. Um, Maiden City have had a good season. They're, they've obviously got plans of, of pushing into into the Irish league scene and be at championship or premier division level. You know, they, they have ambitions. Um, they'll be, they're, they're well, a well-organized club. I remember a couple of years ago playing against them with Letterkenny Rovers and good people about the club as well. So, and they, they're ambitious. Bonnegui have had a really good season. You know, they've challenged the Pushcock Hill all the way for, for the league, but obviously they just missed out in the end up. Um, but the competition itself, it's, I, I think it, you know, we've been crying out, we had been crying out for something like that, for more competition in the Ulster Senior, Senior League over the last number of years, because it was becoming a wee bit stale in the fact that you with only five, six teams, you're relying on Derry City and Finn Harps reserves to keep the league going. So we needed something to freshen it up. We've had Monaghan United come into the league, uh, which has been good. Um, and this added competition of the, the teams from the north coming in has, has been excellent and it creates more interest and it gives clubs um, something more forward to look to look forward to because you know you do get fed up seeing the same faces every week be it the, the same players or the same officials because that's what it is at such a, a small compact league so the extra competition has been great um, obviously from a letter Kenny point of view it's been disappointing from from the point of view, we haven't challenged this season or haven't pushed for for the cups, but certainly, um, you know, Bunny Gee, it's a big big challenge for them, and it's it's good. It'd be good for a local team 
to go into the north and, and pick up a, a piece of silverware, you know, for for all the hard work that's gone, gone into the season for them. Yeah, uh, and maybe at a competition like this as well, will it or can it be a, a factor in encouraging more teams, Anthony, to to come to the Ulster Senior League? Um, because obviously you said that they were relying very much on Derry City and Finn Harps and, and Monaghan are in there. Over the next couple of years, is it imperative for the league to have more teams to become part of it, in your view? I think I think this this is a um, this has been a progressive step, Ashing, having this competition for, with the teams from Northern Ireland, and um, it gives the old it gives the Bunny Gee, Letter Kenny, Cock Hill, um, you know, it gives them something more to to look forward to. But I think long term, Ashing, I think for the future of the league, I think that now I don't think it's going to happen with the Ulster Senior League or the Donegal League, but I think it has to come from a higher power and that being the FAI where like over the last number of years, like I was looking at and trying to do a bit of homework on how we could develop the league. And you look at say, for example, the Munster Senior League where you've got seven divisions. It's run by the one, the one organization, but the top three divisions are intermediate. The bottom four divisions are junior. So I think the way forward for Donegal, for Letterkenny Rovers, Bunny Gee, Cock Hill, is that they come under one umbrella with more teams get fanned back in Swally Rovers, traditionally also senior league clubs, but under the umbrella that, you know, we, you can have promotion relegation, a top team of, a top division of 10 clubs. Um, it might encourage the shown teams again, Bunkrana, uh, Karen Donna, who were stalwarts of, of the league for years. Um, but I think it's, I think people with a genu- genuine affection and love for football in Ireland and our governing body, the FEA, have to take more of an interest in what's going on here. The Donegal League's been fantastic. Um, an unbelievable amount of clubs in the league. It uh, caters for all types of football, you know, from senior teams to reserve teams. It's a good breeding ground for young players coming through. Letterkenny Rovers have benefited this year with the, a progressive step for the youth players into the reserve team, which has been fantastic. But I think for the future of football in Donegal, um, I would, ideally the two committees could get together and work on something. But I think ultimately it has to come from the top table, Ashin. It has to come from the FEA, where they've got to, they've got to be strong to say, for the, for the betterment of football in Donegal, we need a top division, which is intermediate. And if it's the Donegal League that's running it or Austin Senior League, whatever, but I think it has to happen. But we've been talking about it for, for quite a long time now, and nobody seems to want to grab the ball by the horns. And it's been left to Letterkenny, Bunny Gee, Cock Hill, supported by Finn Harps and Derry City Reserves. Um, this season, obviously, Monaghan to increase the numbers. But I just think that long term for the benefit of football in Donegal, we need an intermediate league in in Donegal um, and whatever format it is. But I think we need definitely need more teams. I think the introduction of the the competition this year with the Northern Ireland teams is a step, a step in the right direction. But I think for the long term uh, survival of intermediate football in Donegal, I think that we need one division and everything under one umbrella. And um, I'd like to see something happen in the, in the next season or two, Ashley. Yeah. Well, listen, we'll uh, chat more on that uh, topic, I'm sure, down the line again, and then we'll see what lies ahead for, for uh, football and, and Donegal. But in the meantime, as always, thanks for joining us to talk uh, League of Ireland this week, and we'll speak again soon. Thank you very much, Ashley. Thank you.